Hello, I'm Jim LaJoy. I'm the inventor and the manufacturer of the all-season solar cooker. And today, what we're gonna do is a step-by-step -step video on how to assemble the all-season solar cooker. We're gonna start with unboxing, and then we're gonna go through each step of how to assemble it with close-up shots for you. Uh, at the end, we'll have a completely assembled solar cooker. So let's start. Okay, inside the box, first thing that comes out is a tape measure because there's some measurements. There's one measurement that's important. The next is your cooking rack. Here's two cooking bags and folded up inside the cooking bags is the 14 page assembly and instruction manual. These are called the elevation bars, there's two of them. And one of them's gonna have the tell a friend sticker on it, that's our latest marketing campaign. This is the body of the cooker. And finally, we have the hardware pack. Now before you start, it's probably a good idea to check your hardware pack and make sure that everything that you need is in there. What we have is the Soul Cook Sunlight Sun Sight. You're gonna have two silicone rubber washers. You'll have two thumb screws. You'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight steel washers. You'll have one, two, three four elevator bolts. You'll have six wing nuts and two hex nuts. So the first step in assembly, and this is probably the most important step of all, is breaking in the cooker. All right, this is made out of uh, corrugated polypropylene which is a weatherproof plastic it's very rugged and it originally started out as a nice flat plastic sheet and it likes to be a flat plastic sheet so some of the folds we're going to work on today are ones that we need uh, to break in these hinges. This is a hinge here and um, it's scored and on the opposite side you can see it and what we want to do with these is put our fingers along the edge of the hinge and then snap up like that so we get that hinge to break. Right, now I can't I cannot emphasize enough how important it is that these hinges be flexed a lot. Um, if you spend the time flexing the hinges, pushing down with the heel of your hand, like I'm doing here, you can't hurt the plastic, but you, you really got to get those things flexed. And it's actually, it's easier to do it in a warm area than it is to do it in a cool area. Today's a little cool. We're in the 60s here, and but hopefully you get the, the picture here. These things, you don't want them to stay flat like that. You want them to get flexible, and they're gonna try to stay kind of bent like this. So, it um, and you do that to all these. All right, so we have the embossed mark on there, and I'm gonna hold this flat. I'm gonna put fingers right along there uh, and then I'm going to pull up smartly to get a nice clean snap. If you like you could also put a ruler down there or some other straight edge and hold it there. But once I've got that nice clean snap in it, if you don't break this in enough, the cooker will not have the correct shape and you'll have to struggle to get it to cook well. So. Don't be afraid of hurting the plastic. You can actually take something like a rolling pin and 
roll along there. But now we're getting the idea of how these should be. See, that's starting to be flexible. This is starting to be flexible. So we're gonna do that on all of our joints. Remember, you want to fold them both ways. Again, the initial fold, fingers along the line, hand over here, and a quick snap up. Fingers along the score, a quick snap up. And this is our last one here. So, fingers on the brake, smart snap up, we get a nice clean brake. It's good to do this either indoors or in the shade. You don't want to do it in the bright sunshine because you're going to get a whole lot of very bright reflections uh, in your eyes and you're not going to like that. To start assembly, I'm going to lay the cooker out sideways in front of me. The uh, this is the first panel. Uh, this is the upper reflector panel. This is a uh, just a, a brace. This is a side reflector panel. And to start construction, I'm going to fold the side reflector panel in. I'm going to lift up like that. And then I'm going to go in from the inside to the outside, I'm going to insert an elevator bolt. And I'm going to pull that elevator bolt, pull the uh, the side, I guess I would call it, up, and I'm going to go through the hole just like that. Push the elevator bolt all the way in so that the the square shoulder of it grabs. And to complete that connection, I'll use one fender washer, one of the silver washers, and a wing nut. Firm that down, and you're done right there. Now we're going to turn the cooker around, and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. We fold the side panel in first, we put an elevator bolt going from the inside of the cooker to the outside. We pull this tab forward. We add a fender washer and a wing nut. And snug that down. And we've assembled the box cooking area of the cooker now. The next assembly step, we need one of the elevation bars. Now the elevation bars, this is the top of the elevation bar, and it'll be on the top here. And we start with it, we pull up the upper reflector arrays. Now you can tell these are the upper because this is real round here, and the lower ones are like straight and flat along that dimension. We put a elevator bolt through, and then we put on a hex nut, and that hex nut, it's, it just acts as a spacer, and it keeps things from binding, but it's real important. If you don't put it on, you're, uh, it's going to bind when you try to adjust the cooker, so we have our spacer on there. We put the upper reflector inside the side reflector like so we put an elevation bar on there we got a fender washer and a wing nut what we have now is we have the elevation bar we have the upper reflector 
we have the side reflector and the elevation bar is going to go on the outside of the side reflector. The next step is to attach the elevation bar to the lower reflector. And we start with one of the thumb screws. And the thumb screw gets a fender washer on it. It goes from the inside to the outside. The next thing it gets, once it's out there, it gets one of the silicone rubber washers. Well, we have this one on the inside, like this. Well, the lower reflector is going to go on the outside. So there's our rubber washer. Here's our elevation bar. And you'll finish with a fender washer and a wing nut. Now let's check our assembly on this side. We have the upper reflector going to the inside of the side reflector. We have the lower reflector coming to the outside of the side reflector and we're attached very well. Okay, so that's one side of your cooker. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing on this side as we did on the other. This is the upper reflector panel and it's gonna fold inside the side reflector panel. I'm going to insert an elevator bolt. I'm going to add a hex nut. Remember we said that hex nut was a spacer. That's all it does. And it takes up that little gap. Uh, now we put, again this is the top of the elevation bar. We we'll put the elevation bar on, we add a fender washer, and finally, wing nut. Coming to the lower side of the cooker, we start with a thumb screw and a fender washer poked through from the inside to the outside. We add a rubber washer. We go through the elevation bar. We add our final washer and wing nut. And there we are. So again, checking our assembly order, we've got the upper reflector panel going to the inside of the side reflector panel and we have the lower reflector panel going to the outside and that is correct assembly. We need to check our dimensions. We have the correct assembly order um, but this cooker doesn't have the right shape. You saw how much I flexed it and despite all that flexing it's still not quite in the right shape that we want. It's too narrow. All these reflector panels are coordinated with each other. If one of them is out of focus, then they're all out of focus. So you have to, what's, what we're doing next is probably the most critical step in assembling your cooker. We're gonna measure the distance from the top reflector to the top of the lower reflector. And I've got 29 and a half inches. That's not too bad, but what I want is I want 28 inches. So the way I get that is I'll take both hands and I'll just begin to flex these. And I'm not gonna, I'm not hurting the cooker at all. I'm just doing more breaking in, getting things the way that we want them. Lots of flexing, lots of flexing. Gonna do the same on the other side. All the way down, bending, flexing, bend and flex, bend and flex, bend and flex. The cooker is real strong, you're not gonna hurt it. Now, do you see how much different that is? Let's check our measurement now. Mm -hmm. 
28, 28 and a quarter. That's good. Anywhere between 28 and 28 and a half and you'll be fine. The final step in assembling your cooker is to attach the sun sight. Now the sun sight, if you look at the base of it, it has a wide side, it has a narrow side from that groove there. Well, you put the narrow side of the sun sight on the reflective side of the cooker, like so. The word soul cook will be there to help you. And just slide that down, and now you have a fully assembled all season solar cooker. When I start cooking with these, every time I set up, I'll make sure that my dimension is correct because, again, it takes a while to break these things in. And look at that, I'm out at 29 because the cooker's trying to, really trying to get back to the flat piece of plastic it was when I bought it. And there we are, 28. Um, but after a few tries, it'll come up to the right shape for you. So we have correctly assembled the all season solar cooker. We've used our tape measure to make sure that we have this critical dimension of 28 inches, 28 and a half, somewhere in between there. Put the sun side on correctly. We flex the cooker. I'll tell you right now, just feeling it as I'm flexing it, it's gotten a lot easier. So it's breaking in nicely. One of the features, and I've referred to this as the top reflector panel, but when you're using your cooker, you'll also be able to turn it over onto its alternative base, like so. And that'll be, this then becomes your lower reflector panel. So the, the oven's got quite a bit of scope that it can adjust. The rest of the items that are in there, in the, in the box of the cooking bags, the rack, and um, the instructions. And the instructions will tell you the basics of solar cooking, what you really need to follow. The toughest part is getting this built correctly. After that, it's a simple matter of reading the instructions and following the instructions. You're gonna need a black pot. You're gonna need to use the cooking bags. You're gonna need to use the cooking rack. You're gonna have to have enough time to get your cooking done. So when you put all those things together, you will not fail. Thanks for watching. Uh, when you buy a cooker, you'll see a little tell a friend sticker on here. If you build your cooker and you love it, please tell a friend about it. That's the best advertising there is. And I would appreciate any good recommendations that you can make.